Hello and welcome to the show. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Justin Shinnett, and today it's all about blood donations. I'm so excited to introduce our, t our guest today. It's Brian Mula Howard. He is the donor recruitment representative with the American Red Cross. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, Justin. I'm so excited to talk about blood. That's definitely an interesting topic, uh, to say the least. What's and more exciting than What's more exciting than blood? Than blood? Exactly. <laughs> and and I think a lot of times it's just knowing where it comes from. You know, when you go to the hospital, when there's an emergency situation, or even you just need blood for a particular reason, where does that come from? It comes from somewhere. Some person uh, gave that blood. So let's sort of break it down into its most simplistic form. Why is it so important for people to donate blood? Well, Justin, blood cannot be manufactured. It would be great if we could, <laughs> because that, that would uh, take care of all the needs that, that we have in right. the world <laughs> for blood. Um, however, uh, blood has to come from a volunteer donor. Uh, they cannot be paid. Uh, and um, in order for a patient in need to, to receive that blood, someone has to voluntarily come out to a blood drive and, and give us a, a, an hour of their time, give or take, and, and donate that gift of life, mm -hmm. so to speak. And, on any given day, uh, here in the state of Maine, we're, we're running about five or five, six or seven blood drives uh, all over the state, and that represents uh, us keeping up with the demand from the hospitals um, all over the region. And uh, any given day, we, we try to collect about 300 pints, uh, give or take, uh, a day. So that wow. gives you an idea of uh, you know how how much demand there is. Uh, there's about 39 uh, hospitals in, in the state that we we service and. Um, you know, it's an ongoing, uh, constant need. So we are you keeping up with the demand? I mean, because uh, that seems like a lot of pints that you're collecting. Yeah. But it, uh, is there a shortage of, of blood? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, uh, blood can only be stored for so long, and oh. you know, forty something odd days uh, it can be stored. But uh, in reality, uh, blood really only stays on the shelf, depending on the blood type, uh, anywhere from from seven days on down to even a day's supply, wow. from the time that it's given. Uh, and tested to the time that it's actually used by a patient in need. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the need is truly constant. Um, and throughout the year, there are times where it's especially challenging for us. So the summertime that we just uh, unfortunately got out of, <laughs> we had a wonderful summer. Uh, but it, that is a time that's more difficult and challenging for us to collect. Um, now, why is that? Um, well, the, the schools are, are out. Uh, high schools and colleges represent about 20% of the blood that we do collect uh, throughout the school year. Uh, and in the summertime, uh, there is that gap that we need to fill from community blood drives. Right. Um, so that's that makes it challenging. On top of the fact that we're all enjoying this, the summer sun and right. and for the short all, amount of time yeah. that we have it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a wonderful <laughs> few months. And uh, right. Maine is a great place in New, New England right. uh, throughout the year. But the summertime, it's it is a little bit more challenging for us to get people to blood drives. So now, is there a particular age bracket that tends to give more frequently? Like, is it retirees? Is it um, like you mentioned the schools? Is it like eighteen? year olds that are, are that are giving blood the most like what are you noticing in terms of where you know we need to actually help get more people to, to donate in terms of an age group and and what's the group that tends to be more active in that yeah well we, we see donors across the spectrum of age from 17 on up you can you can give mm -hmm. uh, 16 year olds in this state can actually give with a parental consent oh, uh, so uh, but in terms of, of the donors that we see most often, uh, I think, you know, in years gone, go, gone by, blood donation was, was there with, with, with voting and other civic duties. Uh, so the older generation does um, make up our, our bread and butter of, of, of donors. They're, they're there for us, um, you know, seven days a week. And, and um, that's something that with our, our high school drives and in college level as well, and, and even in the, the younger um, uh, education uh, area. Uh, some of the younger kids can help us to promote blood drives. Um, we're, we're hoping to reinstill and, and have been reinstilling that civic um, obligation. Uh, that's right. something that you, you do. You, you come out um, every 56 days or so, hopefully, right. and, and give your pint and, and support your community. Um, now, how do yeah. you do that? I mean, I, this probably gets to a much kind of larger conversation, but as somebody who has been trying for so many years to get even my age bracket to register to vote, yeah. you know, in, instilling that sense of civic responsibility and duty is a challenge, yeah. you know. Um, so what, what, what are some of the things that the Red Cross does? You mentioned sort of educational outreach. Is it sort of, you know, talking to different classes, you know, reaching out to them? You know, what is it that that you can do, obviously, not there's not a one size fits all depending on the kid. But I mean, what what typical what are the typical educational outreach initiatives that you guys are, yeah. are working on? 
Well, over the past few years, we've been developing some programs specifically tailored to the different age levels. Um, we have a pint size hero program that we're, we're just starting to roll out of the last year or so, and that's geared towards the um, elementary school level. And then we have a, um, uh, a young donor initiative for the middle school, um, whatever, and that's a more elaborate program where it becomes more of like, think of a science fair, but for, uh, for the Red Cross, you know, all, all okay. the different aspects of, of what the Red Cross is all about. And um, so they put that on, but in conjunction with that, they support a blood drive as well uh, um, in both programs. And then, of course, the high school and the college levels are actually old enough to give. Uh, so there they're actually, you know, rolling up their sleeves and donating. Um, but we try to make it fun. Uh, you know, these programs are all about, um, you know, getting them involved, get, getting them excited about, um, you know, the gratification that you're going to feel when you give blood. Right. Um, and it really, truly is one of those things. There's a lot of great causes out there. And, um, you know, I support a lot of them myself. Uh, but blood is one of those unique causes where instead of giving funds, you're actually giving something that is directly impacting another life or up to three, as we right. were discussing earlier. Every pint of blood uh, may be used by as many as three patients in need right. uh, because they can separate out the different components of the blood. Right. So. Now, aside from fulfilling your civic duty and feeling good yep. about that, um, you might also feel woozy after. Um, or, or I think, what are some of the maybe misconceptions people may have about giving blood? They might be scary for some people that have never given before. Oh my gosh, there's going to be a big needle. I'm going to feel really woozy. You know, what are some of those misconceptions that you've probably heard over the years or the Red Cross has heard that, that we can like put to rest right now? Right. That's a great opportunity, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right here, right yeah. on breaking news. <laughs> there are, uh, there's a long list of, of questions and reasons yeah. why people don't give, but some of the uh, more common things are, um, you know, just this fear of needles, like you said. But, you know, m most people have, have gone to the doctor's office for one reason or another, had blood work drawn um, or, or needles for allergy shots or that sort of thing. And, of course, I, I can't sit here and say that um, blood donation, you know, the, the needle going in doesn't pinch and sting. Because right. it does, but it's quick. And you, you have to think about um, the patient in need on the other end in that moment, right. you know. How are they feeling, and, and how much this is going to make a difference in, in their life? Right. Um, but um, you know, as far as that question, does it hurt? Yeah, it does. But just very quickly, um, and a lot of people have gotten stung by a bee too. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I think that hurts uh, quite a bit more because right. that that pain lingers around for quite some time. And this is um, quick; it's yeah. over with. And and they're trained professionals. I mean, these right. people know what they're doing. And this is all they do. These are yeah. our full-time Red Cross staff. That this is what they do. Um, right. Seventy. Well. Sometimes seven days a week, right? But, uh, yeah, all throughout the year. But um, some of the other questions that come up, um, you know, some folks are on different medications, and there are, are quite a few, um, you know, blood thinning type medications that can defer you. Uh, there's other types of medications that may defer you from donating. Right. But but I encourage everyone that is interested in giving to go to our website, which is RedCrossBlood.org, or if you don't have a computer. Um, access to, uh, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. I'll probably bring that up a couple times. Those are right. two great places for, for people to go to find out more. Right. Um, but they, on the website, they have all our eligibility um, requirements and right. um, you know who can and who can't give. But there's also medical conditions like diabetes. Uh, I get that question all the time. If I have diabetes, can I give? Well, technically, yes, you can. It does depend on um, some of the medications and uh, procedures you may have, have right. had, that sort of thing, whether or not you can give. Um, yeah. Are those the common, uh, you know, you mentioned sort of medications and so yeah. what are those typical, uh, low iron count would be another yeah, one iron, that would yeah. to, to be denied? What are some of those kind of typical things? Yeah, then? so, you know, every drive that we have, you know, there's a handful of folks that can't give because of low iron. That is very common. Um, and uh, sometimes there's nothing really a donor can do about that. But there, for most, uh, what you can do is uh, before, before you go to donate, Make sure you stop, stock up on your iron-rich foods, your leafy greens, you know, have a couple burgers. Unless you, Some steak, yeah, no. <laughs> some, some, something like that, you know, leading up to it. You can't right. do it right before you walk right. in the door, but, you know, you want to do things to, to boost your, your iron levels right. um, because that's, that's one of the, um, we put you through a, a health screening before the actual donation, and one of those things, uh, you know, we have basic vital checks and, right. we, of course, check your iron level. And that's, that's for your safety as a donor. We don't want to be taking something that, you know, not leaving you with enough um, red blood cells, so that's uh, that's why we do that. So now, something I, I was talking to somebody I think just the other week um, about wanting to 
donate blood. You know, hey, make, we're going doing a blood drive coming up. Yeah. Uh, you know, would you be willing to to come and donate if you have the time? And 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 one thing that uh, this individual told me was like, well, I'm not going to to donate blood because th they discriminate against people. Okay. And 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 I want to bring this up because just to mention to people that. Uh, there is a policy in place, not from the Red Cross, right. but from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, that denies gay and bisexual men mm -hmm. from giving blood. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can't give blood, for instance. So, um, for life, it's a lifetime deferral. Yeah. And I, I want to mention this just because it's not the Red Cross that's mm -hmm. doing it. Right. Because I don't want people to not go to a blood drive because their friend can't donate and they're upset about it. Oh, we gotta get the Red Cross because they're, and I've heard this from people and yeah. it just concerns me because this is about saving lives. Right. And so, and the Red Cross, right, has come out and said that they want to lift the lifetime deferral and, and they want, they support, uh, you know, a different change in that policy. Right, well, the, the stance, and you explained this uh, properly, the FDA is our, our governing body because blood is both a, a biological agent and it's considered a drug. So for a twofold, they, they regulate us. Right. Um, and they come up with the rules, right. you know, the steps of procedures, everything that we do. Um, you know, they, they take a very scientific approach to uh, deferral criteria. And right. there's some, some questions that have been on there for quite some time. Um, you know, malaria is another um, reason why a lot of people get get deferred because they've traveled right. to certain regions of the world. Mad cow disease uh, is another, and these are diseases, of course, it's very right. different, but um, they're, they're constantly looking at all these different deferral criteria. Um, and a number of years ago, maybe two or so, the FDA did uh, reevaluate um, that particular criteria. Um, and unfortunately, to the, the Red Cross's dis disappointment, uh, they, they opted to stay with the current wording of, of the question. And um, the Red Cross's stance is that, uh, of course, we have to follow the FDA's guidelines. Right, of course. Yeah. Um, but they are, um, you know, unhappy with the, um, the, current, the current guidelines. And, and we support fair and rational and, and um, scientific approaches to deferral criteria based, based upon risk behaviors and that sort of thing, as opposed to, um, you know, what we're talking about here. Let so, the facts lead the way. Right. right. So as it stands right now, you know, we're in a position of, you know, we're, we're following the rules and want to make sure that the blood supply is as safe as it can be. Um, but um, we, we support um, taking another look at this uh, for the FDA. So, and I'm not sure exactly when that will be, but I'm sure it will come up again and again. So. Right. And I just, and I mentioned that to, to really sort of reevaluate the need for people to donate to right. save lives today. Right. At the same time, if you're concerned about the specific policies, it's the FDA that sets the tone. So if there is a concern, petition your, you know, uh, legislative officials at the federal level to do that rather than, you know, boycott. Because, I mean, this does right. happen sometimes where people don't like the policy. And, you know, and now that we're, it. you know, discussing this and, and you're aware of this too, there, there's a day every year that's been des designated as gay Gay Blood Drive Day right. uh, that happened recently. I don't recall exactly. I think it was July. In July 11th, something. maybe. Yeah. So one thing that happened this year that, that was great is that, that the gay community uh, had that, that's behind this had um, come up with a program and approach to this that was productive. Mm. On one hand, it was raising awareness for the issue, which is great. Right. Um, on the other hand, it was helpful for the blood, su blood supply because what they did was ask each individual that was um, supporting this to bring someone along that can donate mm. um, according to the, the current guidelines. Right. So that way, you know, they're raising the awareness and they're also helping the blood supply. So that was, right. that was great and we do appreciate that. Yeah, and I participated in that. I definitely had the shirt. And uh, no, it was, it was great. No, it was yeah. great because you, you brought your friends and, and they were able to give right. and at the same time raise that awareness. And, right. uh, and that's part of the reason why, you know, I wanted to help help you guys out with, right. with doing a, a blood drive because I can't give blood, but that doesn't take away from the need for giving blood. Yeah. You know, my friends, my family, our community needs to get behind donating blood uh, in a consistent basis. And I will just say, just to kind of end this particular piece of the conversation, that um, I have put in legislation for next session to petition the federal government uh, to reevaluate that policy. Um, and great. Vermont has passed something similar. I think Maine needs to do the same thing. So look out for that next next year. But uh, kind of getting back to, to, to this, we do have a, a blood drive coming up in, yeah. right here in, uh, in Saco area, um, right here at our legislative 
office on Main Street. Um, and we'd love for people to, to come out to that. Our office is at 199 Main Street. It's sort of sandwiched between the post office and Rapid Rays. That's usually how yeah. I uh, talk That's about a good it. position for it. Right? Exactly, exactly. And if people want to go, to, this is uh, Thursday, September 18th from noon to 6 p.m. If people want to go to it, do they need to, to pre-register? Well, that's, there's a number of things I wanted to bring up here, too, and that's, yeah. that's one that we're constantly trying to get out there is that we, we do encourage folks to make appointments mm -hmm. uh, prior to blood drives. That gives us a, a better picture mm -hmm. of what we're looking at for the next few days, upcoming weeks, months, whatever. Um, so, you know, I encourage everyone to go to redcrossblood.org mm -hmm. or to call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Those are the two um, portals for folks to make appointments or find out, find out more information about it. But we do encourage that. Um, one new and exciting thing that we have, um, which is an additional way, I suppose, to um, make an appointment and all of that, is we have an app. So any there's an app for that. There's an app for everything. <laughs> so why not giving blood? Exactly. Uh, so if you go to the RedCrossBlood.org website, uh, there's links on there for both Apple and Android devices right. for for you to download the app. Uh, the app gives you the opportunity to search for upcoming drives or even a drive today if uh, you're in a particular zip code and you punch in the zip code and you allow the access to your GPS it's going to say oh here's all the blood drives within a certain radius and all right. that. Um, another great thing is if you're a current donor and you have a donor profile on our website you can use the same login credentials to log into the app and it shows you your donation history how many pints you've given, really gallons, cool. yeah. you know, where you've given before and it also gives you a little bit of a guilt trip and says hey it's been a hundred and some odd days since your last <laughs> donation. Wink hey, wink come, come on in. Out. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah we, we strongly encourage appointments uh, for all of our blood drives and, and um, now I'm interested in this app. So this is this is a new thing that you guys have, have done. Yeah. This is sort of um, kind of in line with all the technological advancements that we're, we're yeah. going with and, and trying to even with the younger generation too. I mean, we were talking about high school and college. I'm sure this will be a, yeah. a bigger hit, you know, with that Absolutely. with the younger crowd. And yeah. uh, I haven't downloaded it on my on my Android phone yet, but I need yeah. to need to do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's definitely really cool. Now, where do you obviously, you know, this is a new initiative. Do you see that there's things like this in the pipeline for the Red Cross in terms of kind of moving the ball mm -hmm. forward in terms of not just the tech side, but yeah. where to see, where do you want to see like the Red Cross in five yeah. to 10 years from now? Is this, are these sorts of projects like this app yeah. going to be, you know, down the line for the Red Cross? Absolutely. There's, yeah. there's, there's lots of, one, one thing about the Red Cross that all of us at work at the Red Cross know and love is mm -hmm. that it's constantly changing and, mm -hmm. and upgrading and improving and, and all right. of that. And it's for the better. Uh, there's been a lot of standardization across the country within our organization uh, because it, in the past it used to be segment, not segmented, but we all did things kind of our own way right. uh, within, you know, as far as promoting blood drives mm. and, you know, that sort of thing. So now we're, we're getting on the same page and um, it's been a, a process, uh, but some of the, the, great, um, the great things that have come out of it are the app, the website is fairly new, online scheduling of appointments is something that's not, not too, uh, not too old. It's actually been around for four or so years, but you know, and our blood drive sponsors have access to this, and it's a tool for them to use uh, to market to the the group of donors that they have at their business or community group and all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's things coming down the pipeline. They're very exciting, and uh, you know, I hesitate to talk too much about them because I'm not right. sure when all these things will come out. But it, you know, rest assured, it's it's all in the effort of of making the blood supply safer. Uh, safe and safer, mm. as safe as it can be, and uh, to make the um, process as, um, as easy and customer focused as we can, can be for our donor. So. Right. And now, Brian, how long have you been a part of the Red Cross? Oh, eons. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> decades, that, darling, decades. Yeah. It hasn't been that long. Um, I, I moved to the state almost 10 years ago. It'll be yeah. 10 years. It's coming next summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I started out. Um, out in the field, um, what they call mobile unit assistant. I drove the trucks and helped set up the equipment oh, and neat. all of that. It was uh, I was in the food and beverage business before that, so you know this was a complete career change for me. Right, that seems like a switch. Um, yeah. There are some similarities now that I'm in this position. As you mentioned, right. I'm a donor recruitment representative. I handle the blood drives in York County. I've been doing this role for about six or seven years. Right. Um, but um, this versus you know working in a restaurant and managing that atmosphere, you know, there's customers, there's donors, there's right. somewhere as far as wait times and all of that. So managing that um, can be a challenge sometimes, but um, 
you know, it's it's been a great a great ride. And I, <laughs> I, now, why do you why do you like do? I mean, obviously, you mentioned it was a definitely a career switch, but I mean, you've been doing this now almost what ten years? About ten years. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, you you have to love what you do if you're doing it that long. So, what? Why do you like to to work for the Red Cross and, and doing the job that you are doing yeah. today? Well, there's there's a lot of jobs you can do out there, yeah. and this this is one of the few, um, you know, in, in the array of opportunities that I had mm -hmm. that has a direct impact on on someone else's life. And you know, my my father needed blood when I was young. He had a his appendix burst, and he needed a unit of blood, as we call it. Um, and my uncle had a liver transplant. He needed quite a quite a bit of blood and blood products for that. Um, and those were both. Um, so I, I have a, a commitment to this as well on a personal side. Um, and I, I've really seen the, the life the life saving and life changing effect that it has uh, for those patients in need. Um, you know, there's other opportunities out there, but I I remain committed to this because of uh, the, the great sponsors that I work with, like yourself and others, uh, volunteers that help us out every day all across the state and they have the same level of commitment for a wide variety of reasons. And uh, of course, the, the great donors that we work with that um, give of themselves and their time, I mean, literally give of themselves for right. someone else. And it's just a, a very unique and, and wonderful opportunity that I have. Now, I heard that there's this thing out here where it's sort of like a phrase, like one uh, don blood donation can save a life. Yeah. How accurate is that uh, yeah. assessment? <laughs> well, you know, it, it is true that um, uh, a pint of blood or a unit of blood can can save a life. We have to say it can save a life because there's opportunities where, or there's situations where someone might be having a, a blood transfusion and it's an ongoing basis for cancer treatments or other similar types of treatments where it's not at that moment that it's a life or death at that moment. Um, but each and every unit of blood that is used is is um, you know life improving and life you know bettering right. uh, donation. But in many instances it is critically needed and it is a life-saving uh, donation so you know it's it really is a wide variety of, of situations that can be used for of course you hear of you know car accidents and other tragic uh, situations where blood is needed right away right. Um, but there are many uses you know daily uh, for people that have an ongoing need so and you know that that does bring me to uh, I wanted to mention three three drives here that are coming up for the remain, remainder of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of course, is the one that we're working on at uh, your office there on uh, Main Street in Saco. That's uh, this coming Thursday, the 18th, 12 to 6. Uh, if you can't make it to that one, uh, there are two other opportunities this month. And of course, beyond that, just like I said, you can go on the website and punch in the zip code. And it's, we're, we're constantly here, to, you know, 365 days a year somewhere. <laughs> but uh, we will be at Southern Maine Healthcare in Biddeford a week from this Friday on the 26th. Uh, that runs from 7.30 to uh, 2.30. And then uh, the reason why I brought this up is that the Biddeford Saco Elks Lodge at the end of the month, this is on a Sunday, uh, there's a special event going on that weekend that many in this area will, will have heard of. It's the Hugs from Haley uh, 5K Run. Uh, it's to support Haley Desjardin and, um, and her family. Haley actually was a um, blood component recipient. She has a, a blood disorder um, where she, she was in a situation. She really needed um, what we have to offer. <laughs> right. oh, of and uh, you know, it started out as the Hugs for Haley event and after that she's been a wonderful little girl. She's turned it around and said she wants to give back and so Which is hug, fantastic hugs to from see. Haley. So what, what a wonderful thing. It but gives she, you hope for humanity yeah, when you see things yeah, like that. You know, the, the kids, they really um, they boil it down to what's important. Of so course. but that that is on Sunday the twenty eighth and it is in the morning uh, on that day. Um, right. the run for that is is on the Saturday, uh, the day before. But um, but yeah, so those are three great opportunities for people to, to come out and give. And again, uh, redcrossblood.org or 1-800-RED-CROSS um, or my own personal no. <laughs> those Those two venue, uh, right. um, portals are the way to go to uh, make your appointment. And you so. can download the app now. And you can download the app. There's I'm really app excited about yeah. the app. It's going to be yeah. great. And you can, yeah, one thing I didn't mention about that, which is very exciting to yeah. especially the younger generation that look, like to take selfies, right? Well, there's a, there's a part of the app where you can, you know, it's a one-handed thing. Oh, gee. Because <laughs> you got your other. Can you down. take a selfie with this? Sure, app? you can oh. take a selfie, and there's all these different things you can do with the picture, and then you yeah. can post it to your social media, you know, wow. outlets. Just just to help us to you know help the community. We help right. get the word out through a nice little picture. Hey, this is what I'm doing, and this maybe this is why I'm doing. It. Obviously, you need two hands to type your message, but right. <laughs> maybe not for some people. But to help, uh, you know, let your friends know, hey, this is why yeah. it's so important, and it gets to your little kind of circle of influence there. So that absolutely. would be really yeah. Really social media is 
ha has taken us in an interesting direction. So um, it's it's great. There uh, should be like an ice bucket challenge for the Red Cross. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't know what it would be I don't though. Know if that would work with a, with a needle in someone's arm. Yeah, I don't know, but, so but uh, yeah. I mean things like that. Maybe really the needle do is take challenge off. enough. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> this that's is the true. blood donor challenge. <laughs> the we blood challenge donor. you to lie down. And right. Well, I think it'll stuff. be fun. I, I mean, have you ever done sort of competitions um, with, you know, maybe rival schools? Because I can just yeah. see, like, Biddeford High School and Thornton Academy do, like, a yeah, battle you know, of the blood drive. Instead of battle of the bridge, it could be battle of the blood drive. Um, or something like that. I don't know. But ha have you ever done something yeah, we, like that? Yeah, we make it fun. We try to do all different ideas. And that, that particular idea we have, have done before. Oh, um, great. Oh, and uh, the last couple of years we haven't. But we're gravitating more towards that again. Mm. Uh, we, you know, we put fire departments and police departments against each other oh, that's and, cool. and make yeah. it, you know, whoever doesn't, whoever brings the most donors, you know, has to, um, or the other team washes their cars or something, you know. Right. But Thornton and, and Biddeford, we, we've had a competition in the past and we may bring that back, uh, but we called it uh, the What Color Do You Bleed campaign. Oh, geez, yeah. It's gross, but. It's graphic, but yeah. effective. <laughs> but it's, it gets right down to the point, but, you know, all yeah. the materials have um, that that kind of message to it and it's interesting uh, both schools are very supportive and we appreciate that and we do that in the spring so looking forward to that in Biddeford and Thornton in March to do that. So. Oh awesome that's great well yeah. Brian thank you so much for yeah, coming on the thank program you very I much. really appreciate it and I will see you which I hope to see everybody else too this Thursday at our legislative office uh, on 199 Main Street again between Rapid Rays in the post office at our legislative office between noon and 6 p.m. we are hosting um, our blood drive, which I'm so excited about. It's so critically important that you give this precious liquid of life because it really does, your one donation can really make the difference. And we may not think about it when you're in a hospital and we're getting blood, but that does come from someone uh, and it could be you. Uh, that you give that 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 such important uh, to thing for so many people. So I encourage each and every one of you to, to sign up. Go to redcrossblood.org and, and make an appointment today, whether it's this Thursday or any upcoming blood drive that the Red Cross is doing. They're doing such important work, and it's really important that that continues with your help. So this has been Beyond the Headlines. I've been your host, Justin Chenette. Stay tuned and stay connected.